Welcome to the February 11th Oshkosh Advisory Pork Meat Park Board Meeting. <laughs> if you haven't, please silence your cell phones. And um, no audience members, so I think we will just get started. Right. We'll call Davis. Here. Earth. Here. Royal. Here. Herman. Here. Back. Kaufman. Here. Metz. Here. Miller. <coughs> Hillett. All right, any comments, questions, concerns about the January 14th minutes? All right, make a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve minutes as mail don't. I'll second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> make a one pause. All right, old business. <laughs> Parks. Amusement Center. Okay. Oh, Carousel. Um, after last month's meeting, you guys, uh, gave some direction in regards to getting some more information together on the carousel operation. Um, and in your packet, it's revived a brief history of where, where we're at, uh, dated back to when the amusement started, uh, center started or when the city took over, and some of our operational costs that we had starting from 2008 to 2015 for you to compare, uh, to look at what uh, our participation levels were, uh, along with the amount of operating dates that we had, our general revenue uh, for, those, uh, for the rides, plus our wages, and our estimates on repairs through those dates of, dates of time throughout to the point when the carousel was shut down in 2015. So brought that back for your information just to review and um, um, you know where we're gonna go here or try to go in the, in the future with that specific piece of equipment at the amusement center. So I don't have a lot to add, but I do know one thing in regards to researching a value for the unit if it were to go to sale or for restoration. Um, I've been researching different um, sites online in regards to historic carousels. Uh, the Brass Ring Company is a company we used to work for with a lot of parts uh, for this unit and also with the uh, train uh, components years back as well. Um, there's been some ownership change in there and I've been contacting a representative that's out in California that deals with these. Um, so I don't wanna really wanna state what a value might be for this type unit because it really ranges. Uh, right now. I'd like to have a more concrete number to what it is and the ones that I've seen on auction are based on operable type units where this one right now needs a lot of repairs in order to be operable so I don't know what what the value would be without good communication with somebody in uh, in that field uh, to know that so just wanted to share this stuff for your uh, reference and uh, if there's any discussion for it at all. Well I guess my Mike I guess Concern obviously it looks like it's already in the hole, even when it was operational. Um, I think at the age of it and the fact that there's lack of viable people to fix it or repair it, what would be something? Has have you guys looked at what would be an alternative, or what would we maybe want to do there to bring more people down into the park and you know, kind of tied to the train, tied to some of the other you know water. Rides? Have you even looked at any other options of, you know, some other ride or something? I guess we've talked in house about a couple of things. I think nothing in specific yet. Uh, I think it's going to go come down to if if we want to revitalize the area or come up with a new attraction or what the public may want to see, or if there's something a little bit more affordable for us to operate. And that might not be an amusement ride, but different types of games or uh, events that might work better that be more feasible for that area. And that's what I'm thinking. I think at this point, and I'm not, I don't want to speak on behalf of the board, but j just the age of the carousel and what it's going to cost to get it back up and the fact that when it was operating, you know, who's, you know it w didn't make any money. Um, so we, I, I personally believe we should be starting to re look at what's another alternative and, and plan on putting something in the probably the 2020 budget because it, it's not going to be cheap to maybe replace it with some other alternative or even maybe for a year um, do some surveying down there of what citizens would like to see added to that park in that area. That's my, my thinking. I don't know what any other board members are thinking, but, you know. I agree. You know, I mean, we're not going to make a Bay Beach out of this place, so we know that. And so it would be, um, or even do we want to do that, or do we want to wait and see where where things come out with the uh, Lakeshore Park master plan, and maybe there would be an opportunity to do something in that area. 
down the line. I mean, I, I don't know. Do we want to just focus on, because this is a Manami Park attraction that is down and probably too cost prohibitive to fix it and, you know, future repairs and say, let's focus on something else from Manami Park? Or do we say, let's wait and see where the ideas come out of the what's left with the Lakeshore Golf Course? Just kind of thinking outside the box. Have you received much community feedback on Bill As our way, the carousel? Some kind of survey or? Oh, so. I think there's ways to do a survey. It's just a matter of how it's worded to do things. I think we have a great avenue through Polco uh, with the city uh, to do that as well. Uh, Go ahead. I just, you know, we did share with you last month, um, we did have two recent surveys. One when we did the Menominee Park Master Plan and the recent Corp update. Um, so I think we have some pretty good feeling on, um, we didn't focus specifically on the carousel. On the one question I think was more focused on the carousel. Um, but as we talked internally too, there's the other rides down there and the concession area that um, those are not doing very well business-wise and um, I think Jenny and, and we've had some more other discussions can we have some more special events down there get riders down get people there to get them on the train get them on the whip um, to, to get people down there from other for other events and so that's something we're, we're actually having some <coughs> about too. so so I, I guess I I'm not in favor of doing a poll on this I think it's um, I think it's up to the board to say yes we should continue to look at um, specific for the carousel right now um, you know, like Chad said, let's try to find out from somebody that, um, versed in the, the carousel industry what it might be worth. Um, you know, we've talked, is there an opportunity for a miniature golf type event or a, a feature? Um, so we've got some different ideas. Um, and like I said, some special events might help get people down there to get the revenue up as well. So The one thing I would add, I think that it being down for as long as it has been has given an opportunity to kind of see what the park is like without it. And I don't know that there's, it didn't seem like last time we talked there had been necessarily an overwhelming number of people clamoring for it back. People would like it, but it's not something that it seemed like there was a, a really big movement for it. And so um, I think that kind of gives you an idea of, of where the, a, a good reason to go ahead without it. I think <coughs> it would help with that too. Um, and then with the, my other comment would be just, if you know, as you research what we want to put in there and its place um, maybe having just the whip in the train might not be enough so then I mean it might be worth work with our way towards getting out of the amusements altogether because just coming out for two rides might not be as appealing to some people as or others so just some other considerations to be made too so yeah I think that's gonna be our next step we've been looking at that Chad and Jenny every year because um, you know with the increase in wages you can only increase concessions so much and the ride prices occasionally and you're still we can't offset those increases to get reliable staff there and mm -hmm. we heard about that last month where we have to adjust the start and end dates because it's just not feasible any longer and not to put Jenny on the spot by any means but if if we did other activities in the thinking outside the box what would be maybe some of the ideas that you think would attract people down Special events you're talking about? Yeah, special events or, you know, Ray mentioned mini golf or, you know. I mean, so. we've tried to, you know, I don't know how many of you guys, you know, camp and do, I mean, we, right. my family does a lot of outdoor things. And it's like every camps that you go to has like, you know, these miniature golfs or like Gaga Ball is humongous. I mean, you go to scout camp, you go to campgrounds, you go wherever, and everybody has Gaga Ball. You know, kids love it. Or Chad and I have talked about, you know, horseshoes, um, or not horseshoes, but. Uh, oh. Cornhole out yeah. there. Um, you know, I don't know liability-wise with the city, but you know these big, huge jump pillows are. I mean, they're so popular now. You know, I mean, so we've just we've toyed around different ideas, like nothing, nothing seriously. But so, in a sense, is the amusement side of the park kind of outdated to what's out there now? I, I mean, people love the train. So, I like, I mean, like you said, I mm -hmm. think that you have to have something more than the train and the whip. So, could we make it more into like kind of a rec area? You know, and mm -hmm. have some of these different corn holes and you know and, and some of that's pretty inexpensive right well I mean, right it's pretty inexpensive but it would bring maybe more people to the area you know so it's just things we've toyed with but nothing real you know serious um, well and I, I personally i think that's the way we should start looking because you know we're, we're spending a lot of money on our facility side but not a lot of money in the amusement side of things in a sense but yet we want to provide some value at family entertainment and we've seen with the leech things you've done to expand the tuesday night concerts how 
the community yeah. has accepted that. So I think if we could get more family oriented, cornhole, I, I totally agree. I mean, you know, that's that's big. Is that a place where people would stay for a while? You know, yeah. you come down for a train ride, it's 11 minutes. So right. then you, you know, you haul the kids out, you put them on an 11 minute train ride, and then the whip ride is for 12 and under, you sure. know, then you're done. One thing of more people to come down for picnics for the right. day if we had or family of, reunion things, and yep. they could slide over and do yep. a couple interactive things in that area, go through the zoo. And at if the we had same a couple time. things that people would stay longer, and then mm -hmm. with the upgrades, we talked about little Oshkosh. You know, people that's really getting old, you know. So if you did cornhole and some of those other activities, where in kind of the layout of that, would you go more toward the Kiwanis Shelter, go in that area of the park, or Maybe middle of the us. park? They haven't gone there yet. Yeah, I haven't even discussed that, just kind of some ideas. As far as zone, I think looking just into the amusement center area itself, I think there's some adequate space to do things, but obviously the carousel takes up a big area in there, which would be a great protective zone. We have it partially fenced already. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be a secured zone, uh, and people could stay away from the train tracks, could be done. But there's, I think there's a lot of good opportunities in that area to try to work with. You know, you still have the water attractions down there to work from, and uh, the train is there. I think Jenny hit it right, too. I mean, there's a lot of things there for smaller kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but trying to hit another uh, demographic is a challenge, you know, for the kids from 8 to 13 or 14 years old. What can be done or what can keep people around in the area uh, and more active from that? Well, if, I guess if you're looking for a recommendation, I, I guess I would make we a re recommendation. We don't move forward to fixing it and look at alternatives. We didn't put it on here for an action item yet. Okay. We just had it on for discussion because okay. uh, I know in the last meeting we thought it might take more than one or two meetings. So we just we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to you know, give more feedback. So um, if you want to give us direction, I think what would be good is to you know have Chad continue to work with coming up with some pricing information. And then when we bring it back, we might have some ideas to say this is what we think we can get for it and then it might give you a, a little more comfort level too but that's something you know like i said chad's just waiting for a couple calls back um one other special event that um, we are looking into and actually have a meeting set up uh, in the next week or so um, a lot of communities and and it, it's not about the drinking or anything but a lot of communities are having beer gardens um, Milwaukee County Parks has a number of them in their parks um, a number of communities throughout the state have gone with that and it's really more of a family um, family event they come down it's an early evening um, there's bands um, you know more of a German descent uh, some polkas and things like that and again if we can get people down to these areas get them using the train get them using the whip using some of our concessions to help generate just um, getting the people there um, we've had an interest from um, some of the local people that are involved in you know breweries and um, some of the the beer industry that they might have an interest in that so that is something that um, we're looking at as well and maybe we do that at the Kiwanis shelter and again just get people down into that area so something we're toying with right now because they very, they're very popular um, especially Milwaukee County Park area so do you have a timeline on when for the carousel I mean is there you won't we should have a decision you know you bringing information back and by next summer we should be moving forward on something I, we'd like to see a decision next uh, month from okay. the board so that um, you know we can continue to market it or if we need to put it on the uh, different websites or however we need to work with our purchasing division and then you know we still have some pieces to remove correct do we have anything yeah the main the main the mast, main mast has to come mast out so. has to come out of the site there and there's gonna be some grounds restoration done as well in that area so we just don't want it looking like it might be coming back again in the near future if it's okay. not the intent. So we'll have it back on the agenda for an action next next month. And again, if you have more questions or more thoughts, oh, we can look at. Um, but I think that's going to open up the bigger discussion <coughs> of what to do in that whole area. Great, thank you. All right, on to new business. Taking this one, Ray. Um, the next one is to um, discuss and recommend trail construction in Menominee Park. East of Hazel Street from Merritt Avenue to um, Irving Avenue. Um, the Hazel Street is going to be reconstructed, I believe, from Washington Ave up to um, Irving this year. Um, we've been working with engineering on some of the plans, and um, unfortunately, we became aware of it too late into the budget season last year to put in adequate funding. Um, but we feel that because it's in a complete reconstruction and they're going to be looking at the um, sidewalk on the west side and if there's deteriorating sidewalk they'll be working to get new sidewalk in to enhance pedestrian access on the um, west side of hazel um, the park plan does call for some trail or pedestrian access um, in many of these areas so what we are 
um, looking at doing is bidding out as part of an, uh, this project with engineering uh, alternate to have um, the trail installed. And if you take a look at the two maps that um, Stacy provided, um, it'd really be starting at the corner of Merritt and Hazel, um, coming to the north. Um, what we're trying to do is avoid most of the bigger trees, some of the smaller ones there. Bill has looked at those and we can probably transplant some of those. Um, but what we'd like to do is keep the trail system outside of the trees, make sure we um, retain those. Um, it won't affect the ball diamond uh, because we'll stay out of that area as well. So really taking the trail from, um, from Merritt up to Parkway. Um, allowing the uh, pedestrians to cross at that intersection. We'd most likely have um, crossings, hatch crossings in, the, in Hazel, and then going across the road through the park. And then it would continue to the north, um, again, going around the major trees that we have in that area, to the next map, which shows you going from um, Parkway to Irving up to the next corner. We have had requests from uh, Bella Vista and others on the west side of Hazel because um, of limited access. Once they cross the um, cross Hazel to get into the park, there's limited access directly to either a sidewalk or a pedestrian trail. So um, what we would like to do is, as I said, include this with the project when it gets bid out. Um, our engineering staff is doing the design currently. Um, what we'll ask them to do is bid out um, a five foot concrete sidewalk. Um, as, as well as, I believe, a 10-foot wide asphalt trail. Um, they have given us some preliminary numbers that they believe that the um, alternate bids might come back at. Uh, and I've mentioned this and, and met with the city manager and the finance director, um, and I'll be meeting with the finance director to try to identify some potential funding sources to get the project done. Um, but I think it's a, a wise thing to do as, as this project moves forward. Okay, to your, and I'll be play a little devil's advocate here. Obviously, from Merritt, <clears throat> you'll tie into the sidewalk on the east side of Merritt, correct? Okay. So you, from there, though, you can access to the east down to Little Oshkosh unless you walk the sidewalk, correct? There's sidewalks in front of it because there's a private property there, that one house? Yes. Okay. You're talking about Bella Vista, folks. If we don't put a trail from say across from their property we have the trail going across but if we don't extend it to the east down into the major part of Menominee Park they still don't have access to the park the so would they be interested in helping maybe fund a little part of the trail to help offset the cost so that those folks could take their parents or whoever at Bell Vista for a walk with wheelchairs or walkers so they have a circle route and put a trail down along you got the road that's going into, I, I don't is Parkway. that Parkway continues? Parkway. Mm -hmm. Okay, down, and you put it on the north side of the road, if, you, if everybody kind of gets it, and then you, you, you bring it back on the other side where we usually have parking down there for special events or bigger <coughs> events on the uh, east side of the, is that Oaks Trail or no? Whatever that road is called. Seward. Uh, this one? Seward. Yeah, Seward, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking is, you got where Stacy's got the red lines, bring a trail to the east down and make a circle route in that one small area so that uh, there's a connection for those that not only at Val Vista, but you have another senior living project across the street from there. Those people are more not in assisted care, they're more in independent living there. But I'm just thinking that, yeah, we got access on part of it, but not access to the whole. And yeah, we can't do it all maybe at one time, but at the same time, maybe plan down the line or even look for some private funding to help offset the cost and make a circle route for those that are living in this, you know, older adult neighborhood area with one being assisted living at some of Bell Vista. Bell Vista is also independent living, but the other one is all independent living. So just thinking out loud. Um, You're saying on the north side of that road? Or on so the it would be, side? well, it would be, on, yeah, the north side of the road. Okay. And then bring it down okay. and then, then take it down, then bring it again mm -hmm. down to the north. And you'd have to bring a trail back up. Well, there's a trail here. There's, there's, there's a, a trail, trail there. Along. Actually, the, the park plan does call for this trail to come yeah. here. But because the corridor of Hazel was being reconstructed, that's right. what we focused on. Okay. And we do, and I agree, Steve, that has to happen. Um, we do have money in the CIP, I believe, 
I don't have it with me, but I want to say either, I believe it's two years from now for trail work in Menominee Park, and that probably would be a good connector okay. right there. But you're right, and that's what the master plan called for, because that would give that loop route and allow for people coming over from Parkway mm -hmm. into the park. Yeah. Um, my concern is trying to come up with the funding for all of it right now. Right, because part of the bike pedestrian committee and their plan is you know to put sidewalks where there aren't currently sidewalks and some of that and so um and they're limited in their funding and budget too so so hazel isn't going to have sidewalks on the east side no that's what okay. this would be into the park right, right. um and i would think um, we'd probably want to go with the multi-use trail the asphalt yeah. trail yeah um, but we're going to get bids for both just to see what they come back as and then as it comes up to irving that ties into then sea land and sailors yes side Yep. So just to clarify, Ray, you said you're in a five foot sidewalk bid and then a ten foot path bid? Correct. And I think that if you did a it would fit the park much better with a ten foot than I don't know how the five foot would would feel as a part of that park. Um and then my other only other comment was that that'd been nice how crappy of a road Hazel is. Like I, w I could have used this a long time ago biking up and down that road. So mm -hmm. um I think it'd be it's a great idea. It looks really good and I would agree on the asphalt the trail um, and and concurring what Steve is saying Big that we need to plan for trail. that loop on the oh. north side of Parkway and I think that might be a good use Steve I think we've earmarked um, fifty thousand dollars okay there's good. some trail work and that is probably a section we could do um, at that point now when we do a trail um, how far down do we dig and what kind of base do we put below it so that you know how it handles the weather and elements yeah. and things i don't have the specs here but we worked with engineering to come up with the specs so that we can take our our vehicles our maintenance vehicles on it as well so it's a, a standard trail spec with an adequate base okay and then you anticipate this would be open during the winter months plowed and everything like some of our other trail systems are um i would expect yeah if we're if we're plowing the trails up there that this would be plowed as well okay. i don't know that a lot of people know that we keep our trails open in the parks and stuff mm -hmm. year round. so that people can use, access and use it. I, you know, I think it's a great benefit for those that like the winter outdoor activities. You know, that they can continue to walk or do whatever because we do keep them maintained. So. Mm -hmm. And I did, you know, back to your question about some potential private dollars. I, I have an individual who's um, talked to me in the past about wanting to fund some trail work here. I did reach out to this gentleman. Um, he'd like to see something more on the north end when we get into okay. the trail system up there. Um, so there's an interest, um, and we can definitely reach out to. Some others that might have an interest as well. I think it's a great opportunity for public-private partnership. This is one where we would like to have a recommendation uh, because eventually it will have to go to the council um, and because it was not budgeted. As I said, I'll be re working with the finance director and the city manager to try to identify some funding sources. Um, and depending what the bids come in, and if we can do that, um, when the the whole Hazel Street reconstruction comes to the council will include this so we'd like to have the, the board support if that's what you'd like I will motion to approve or whatever I'm supposed to say for, for <laughs> I never know the exact wordage <laughs> which is why it's nice to have Amy back in her role here <laughs> I'll second all right uh, Davis aye Dirth aye Royal aye Herman aye Hudak. Hoffman. Aye. Nets. Aye. Motion passed six to zero. All right. The update on the Little Oshkosh replacement project. Yes. Um, as the board is aware, uh, we do have that project in our budget for this year. And um, we have been working with a company. They are actually out of New York called Play by Design. And Stacy has a couple pieces of information that she'll pull up on the, the screen um, and for the citizens as well. Um, Play by Design is a company similar to when Little Oshkosh was built back in 1997. Um, that company was Leathers and Associates. Um, this company does exactly what Leathers does. Um, it's actually two of the employees that worked on Little Oshkosh went off and started their own business called Play by Design. So they're familiar with Oshkosh, familiar with our facility. Chad and I have actually had uh, one of the individuals here to do a, um, a safety walkthrough of the facility with us and give us some ideas on how to limp it along. Um, so what I wanted to do is, is give everybody an update on, on where that project is. Um, 
We are currently working on an agreement with Play by Design to uh, come into Oshkosh, um, what they call a design day. And if you recall back when Little Oshkosh was constructed, um, they'll go into some of the schools to let the kids start giving ideas on whether it's equipment or certain unique things in the community that they'd like to see in the playground. Um, we're planning for that. There's going to be a staff member from Play by Design coming to Oshkosh on Monday, February 25th. Um, what I have done is I've arranged with the Boys and Girls Club to let us come to the Boys and Girls Club, um, get some of their participants, give them an opportunity to give us input. Um, I believe we're looking at like 4 until 5.30 being there, allowing the kids to give us some drawings, um, give us their input. And then from like 6 until 7, I believe, um, we're going to get some press releases out and it'd be open to the public to come in and give us some ideas what they'd like to see. Um, Ann Schaefer is ready to, to publicize that with the neighborhood associations, not only by Menominee Park, but throughout the city and encouraging people to come out and give us their input. So that would be Monday, February 25th. Tuesday, February 26th, what we plan to do is go into um, Webster Stanley Elementary School uh, for most of the morning, hopping from the different various classes. Um, again, letting the kids give us input, give us their thoughts, um, and working with them until about lunchtime. Um, what we actually did was um, worked with the school district, and I believe, was it Friday or today, Stacy? went out today. Um, we sent out um, a letter from our department to the school district. They were going to distribute that to the, all of their schools electronically. Um, front page gives some of this information. The back page asks them to give us their design, designs or ideas for the playground. They can either um, email it back to our department or we're going to let them turn it into their teachers and then we'll go out and pick those up um, before the design day so that the, the designer has those. So a number of ways that the community can start getting involved with this. Um, then on February 26th, that afternoon, um, the, the individual from Play by Design will sit down all afternoon. We actually have a room um, where she's going to be locked into a room all afternoon at the Senior Center, taking all that input and really putting pencil to paper and coming up with at least an initial concept design. Um, and again, it's very familiar with um, how Little Oshkosh and those projects are handled. Um, what she will do is we'll work with her over the next week or two. Um, and my intention then is to come back to this board on March 11th at, um, at your next meeting and present what the initial design looks like. Um, we can make some revisions. Um, she'll work with us internally as far as staff goes to get um, thoughts from us of things that they want to put in there, if it's maintenance intensive or other things or um, other ideas from staff as well. So hopefully by March 11th, you guys will have a, um, a design. Stacey, you want to pull some up from some of their other projects? And you can... Anybody can go on their website and see some of the projects. Again, it's um, played by design. And so they're handicap accessible also? Yes, what we will be doing is the, um, um, well, we will be, um, it's gonna be the port in place rubber surfacing um, and all of the playground needs to meet um, accessibility guidelines. They might not have, we might not have the double ramps in all the way throughout, but it's gonna be um, ADA compliant and accessible so but these are just some examples and um, if you google play by design or what is the do you have the website handy Stacy so play by pbd playgrounds.com um, and you can see projects throughout the country uh, they have some here in Wisconsin that they recently did there's one um, down in Janesville we're actually going down there with um, um, some of the UW Oshkosh staff to look at a different project down there later in, I think, early March. Uh, but we're going to take a look at what was done there along with the other project. So feel free to take a look at some of these. Um, so after March 11th, give you an idea on the schedule. Um, I'd like to finalize the design, let's say, in March and April. Um, we'd like to bid the project out um, in April and May, sometime in that time frame. And then what our intention would be is to, um, our staff will be looking at things that need to be um, dealt with um, during the summer. To, we're going to limp this through one more summer. Um, our intent would be that probably in mid-August we would start the demo. Um, and then we are scheduled for um, some construction in mid-September, September 16th. So what Play by Design will do is they'll come in and manage the project. Uh, they'll help us bid it out. They put together the specs and the information. And then what we intend to do is bid it out to local contractors. And the local contractors can come in and um, work with Play by Design as the project manager. Um, it's going to be a little different project for the, the contractors because they're going to have to commit to being there for 10 or 14 days straight 
um, on this project to get it completed so that play by design staff can get out so again it's um, a process that we'll work through in our bid specs we'll make sure that we identify that schedule um, tightly and if there's a company out in the unit um, in the community that wants to you know look at ways that they can step in and help us with some public private partnerships as well on the project we'd be willing to have that discussion as well um, we've had some discussion or some questions come up about the um, uh, the paver bricks that are existing at Little Oshkosh that families had purchased. Our intent is that patio is in is decent shape. We're going to utilize that patio and the paver bricks in the existing structure. So the entrance will be still in that area. Um, I know we talked about getting some new benches and other things to um, as you enter that area. So if you have a paver brick there, it will be staying and utilized in this new structure. So is that all composite wood? It will be all composite, no wood products, correct. Um, and again, what we will be doing is making sure that there's no um, line of vision issues. Um, that's one of the biggest things with Little Oshkosh is, um, and Scott, you can jump in on this, but the police department um, would like to see through the structure um, when you've got boxed in areas under playground equipment, things happen there that shouldn't be happening on a playground. Um, so we'll definitely be taking a look at some things um and scott your perspective will be helpful on some of that as well as we go through this process so so like i said we're going to go through one more summer at least three quarters of the summer is my hope and then um move forward with the reconstruction <coughs> we'll have and what's the anticip anticipated timeline for um, construction is we're scheduled for september 16th right now for play by design to be here and uh -huh. you said about two weeks two weeks and we need to be down because for the um, port in place surfacing, the temperatures have to remain consistent temperature for a period of time. So you're hopeful. <laughs> September, we should be okay. You never know, but no, we should yeah, be. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you never know. <laughs> um, so if there's any citizens that have questions or wanna, um, you know, contact us, feel free to call the Parks Department or email me, and we can um, answer any questions you might have. Um, but the biggest question has been, what's going to take place with the paver bricks? And I think if. Um, Chad agrees. I think that that area is is something that we can preserve and and use again. So, was there any plans as far as with existing playground equipment or areas in there as far as um, salvaging any of it or selling it? Or there's liability concerns okay. with that. Um, you know, if we're going to look at doing it as far as far as a memorabilia type thing, we can we can look at some of that. A lot of it is not in good condition. I mean, that's why we're going through this. The wood is deteriorating. Um, 95 percent of it is probably not reusable um and there's like i said there's liability issues with with doing that so we can look at some of those but um, most of it will be removed a lot of it's actually been removed they had some uh you know some old time pictures that were framed under some uh, lexi lexon glass or plexiglass and a lot of those have disappeared and you know the borders are are gone so we've had to remove some of that stuff as it's deteriorated already so you know and i know because i approved it but i don't remember top man Pro projected cost for entire project is five hundred thousand um, dollars i don't have um, everything broken down at this point because right. it really design it depends on the but design funding there for five hundred thousand correct Okay. And then um, once we have the, the conceptual design, we've already had discussions with the community foundation, um, and they are willing to help us to try to generate some additional dollars. What we'd like to do is uh, be able to preserve some of the funding for a maintenance endowment, um, like Little Oshkosh had when it was constructed, because eventually that poured in place rubber surfacing and other pieces of equipment need to be replaced. And um, it's one of the things we're trying to do with some of these larger projects through the community foundation is having an endowment fund established there. Um, so I think once we have that um, pretty picture and some people can really um, take a look at what's going to be there, it'll be an opportunity for us to um, get Carlene and the Community Foundation involved with some raising of dollars as well. I'm only saying this partially in jest, but is there like technology that exists that spiders would stay away? Because <laughs> that's always the worst part of little Oshkosh when you take your kids there as you go through the... So I wonder if there's a way to have that stuff treated like when you're, it's being manufactured. Chad, does that exist? If not, I feel like that's our million dollar idea. But we do treat the areas for spiders in the spring couple, uh, once a year uh, early on for some of the facility shelters in that area. Just due to the water, you're going to have an experience no matter what. So, But we do have, do some treatments down there. But 
Don't have the product yet, Tony. Okay. And so as as you're out in the community, and I know Little Oshkosh is um, a very sentimental topic to have, um, but this is the period of time where a lot of communities are going through this. Like I said, Janesville did it recently. I think there's one in here from New Berlin. Um, and we know of other um, communities throughout Wisconsin where they're at that same time where things need to be replaced. I and mean, we're trying to do something that will not replicated, but still have a, a feel of what Little Oshkosh was. So um, I know people are going to be upset when they still hear about it. And I know when we're going through budget time, we're getting questions. But unfortunately, it's um, 20, going on 22 years now that it held up. So. Thank you. All right. How long is this? Up? At least that long. Uh, the composite, you know, yeah. 30 to 50 years, but it all it really depends on, you know, the changing um, safety standards for the playground equipment. That's what really um, makes us change our equipment every 15 to 20 years. Replacement parts and then safety standards changing within the equipment. Well, of course, use. I mean, that playground was heavily, heavily used, you know, I mean. Yeah, yeah we have um, 100 plus, 100,000 people that go through the zoo and easily that same number and, and more, lots more use Little Oshkosh. Thank you, Ray. All right, Bill. Okay. Up. Thank you. Um, as many of you are aware, we've had an ongoing uh, tree inventory throughout the city, and uh, we've been um, we update that on a regular basis. Um, and so, three years ago, we decided to, uh, with uh, some of our GIS capability we have now in the city, uh, we decided to break up. Um, the, uh, the zones within the entire city so that we could more efficiently prune all the trees on a regular basis. So what we've done, and uh, as you can see on the map, is uh, broke the city into five uh, individual zones. And so each winter, my crew can uh, concentrate on uh, pruning an entire area. So um, we uh, started uh, pruning on this uh, schedule last year. Uh, we worked an area which is essentially east of the Fox River and south of Murdoch to the lake. Um, in that zone, we have uh, a little over 1,900 trees and we last year we had a really nice winter so everything uh, went quite smoothly on that uh, I bring in uh, not only our staff arborists but we have uh, personnel at the cemetery as well who are uh, some trained certified arborists and, and some others who assist the, the uh, forestry uh, crew on doing a lot of that work so uh, we were able to accomplish that uh, last year uh, well ahead of schedule um, this year, in about December, we embarked on a, uh, a zone which is uh, the area roughly south of 9th Street um, down to the city limits to the south. Uh, so in that area, we have uh, about uh, 1,824 trees. And to date, we're just about at the 1,800 mark. So we've, uh, of course, had a beautiful December and and good share of January so the crew is able to really uh, make some make some good progress on that a lot of them um, that we were working on this year are kind of small trees that we had, uh, planted uh, about five six years ago through the taking root project so uh, we were on cycle to do a lot of the structural pruning and try to get some of those uh, trees just uh, you know into a little better condition uh, many of them were starting to uh, encroach into sidewalks and in the streets and that sort of thing so we were able to do some of that structural work so that um, uh, we have better longevity for the trees uh, uh, in that planting area so uh, we've uh, we've had a great year uh, we've got to uh, do a few removals that we've uh, marked um, in that area um, one of the advantages of of working within this sort of pruning schedules is that um, my certified arborist on staff will get a good look at each individual tree as they progress so um, you know usually we'll run into you know a handful of trees that will need to be removed um, primarily uh, a lot of those are ash that are in just kind of tough shape or um, you know trees that have included uh, bark and trunks which they're more susceptible to storm damage so we're trying to address a lot of those so um, uh, now that a lot of the pruning work is done, we're going to address some of those uh, s removals that we have in that zone as well. Um, so uh, all is going pretty well with that program. So, uh, you know, we're also 
you know, planning on adding more trees in some of these areas to uh, some of the trees that we will have to remove, you know, we're, we will replace too for homeowners, um, you know, because that's usually one of the concerns that if we're <coughs> taking a tree out, you know, people are, are uh, looking to have a replacement. So we always accommodate that within our uh, normal planting schedule then that will occur next spring. So uh, we're, we're trying to, you know, keep up on, uh, you know, installation of trees so that we can actually install more trees than we remove. So we're hopefully in a more sustainable position for the long term. Um, so uh, that's essentially all I've got related to that. I don't know if anybody has any specific questions or concerns about that. Just have a quick question. We do uh, have a situation, uh, homeowner along our street basically took and butchered one of the trees up. Is it something where you normally would want them not to do any pruning, cutting? Uh, by ordinance, uh, they are not allowed to okay. do any pruning. Um, some do. Um, you know, we can usually tell. Yeah, that's uh, when you could tell. Going definitely. Through it. <laughs> yeah. If if you, yeah, we do some corrective work, and and you know, I understand if they're drooping low, you know, people just kind of take it upon themselves to deal with it. But um, whether they're in the um, 2019 zone or not, you know, we are always, you know, willing to go out and help address, you know, at any time, any, any pruning issues that someone has on a city tree. So all it is is a phone call or an email to, uh, to me, and then we'll, we'll have somebody out there and uh, attend to it, you know, correctly. In the last few years, Bill, we've had a lot of uh, apartment complexes come up. Do we have any re any requirements, okay. or do we do anything to assist in tree planting in those apartment complexes or things like that? I know, you know, you know. Well, we will um, plant the terraces in the public spaces. Um, if I don't know if you're talking about within private the, spaces, there, um, right? So uh, we can private the space is right a, a developer's issue. Um, you know, uh, community development will often, you know, in you know the plan approval will require you know this, this primarily parking lot areas but they will they do have some requirements for planting in those private spaces okay and you, you gave tree counts what mostly are the trees that we as a city will plant in the right of ways or is it we you are, mentioned ash um yeah we are using a variety of species uh, so that we can stem any future insect or disease issues that may, uh, you know, for example, ash. You know, we have emerald ash borer. Um, fortunately, Oshkosh had a fairly low inventory of ash to begin with. Um, when uh, emerald ash borer first kind of came into Wisconsin, we were at 17 percent. Um, we've mitigated a lot of those trees through construction projects. We've removed some. And we're also, uh, we also have a very active treatment program. So we're treating the trees that are, um, you know, good structurally and primarily the white ash that um, are kind of in a stage of growth where they're, they're getting really nice right now and they're not, you know, large enough trees that it gets terribly expensive to treat them. So we're, we're trying to, you know, salvage ma many of those as, as we can. Um, but then some of those that are giving us issues with storm damage or have other structural defects, you know, we're, we're tending toward removal on some of those just to bring that percentage down. And when we replace, we'll put in? Uh, a variety of trees. Uh, we've been working with several nurseries who are okay. specializing in uh, species diversity because, um, you know, we've learned our lessons with American elm and the loss of all the American elms over, you know, most municipalities throughout the country and, and now ash is similar. So we're, we're trying to mix it up as best we can so mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we're not going to lose whole swaths of, of inventory. Good. I just wanted to say um, this is something Bill and I have talked about for a couple of years to try to get this um, five-year schedule in. And what really helps is um, typically that's about when the tree needs repruning um, re again is roughly five years. And it um, is more um, proactive for Bill and his staff than reactive. As he said, you know, if they still get a call that there's a nuisance tree or a tree that is overhanging the street or sidewalk, people can still contact us to go out there. Um, but it's more systematic for, for Bill and his staff to get out in the community in this quadrant, get the trees done, and then the following winter move on, and knowing that in four years that they'll be back in, or five years they'll be back into that area again. So um, I think it really helps focus.
focus the, the areas of the city too, so. Thank you, Bill. Welcome. Can we move on to staff reports? Um, I'll try to be brief. Um, some of the bigger projects that we're continuing to work on are the, um, the Rainbow Park ball field, as well as Spanbauer Park ball field, or Spanbauer field. Um, going to council tomorrow evening is to award a contract to a firm uh, that is going to be coming in doing the excavating on those two fields. Those bids came in very favorable for us. Um, uh, the contractor is willing to try to get in here as soon as weather approve or weather cooperates. Um, so sometime, hopefully in uh, possibly March, April. Um, again, it's all weather dependent. Um, we are currently um, bidding out the fence um, work that needs to be completed at those two ball fields, and those will be probably coming back in the next two weeks or so. So those fields were continuing to uh, make improvements or, or moving towards getting the projects moving. Uh, the Lakeshore Park master plan process, those um, proposals from interested firms were due last week. We had nine firms um, submit proposals, which is very good. Um, we are currently um, evaluating those. Um, we're doing it with not only with our um, staff in our department, but I've asked um, community development and planning staff to help evaluate those and help us narrow that selection down as well. Um, my hope is that we will be bringing forward a contractor um, to, for council to approve at one of their meetings in March. Uh, so that process will begin shortly thereafter. Um, a couple projects I just wanted to give you a heads up on that um, we already have on the agenda for next meeting. Um, I had a, re a meeting recently with DNR staff. They're looking at um, putting some fish sticks. Um, it's really a fishing vegetation um, that they've been doing in other areas and uh, very successful to make it uh, more attractive for fish habitat. Um, so there's various areas throughout the Oshkosh area, mainly in the Fox River. Um, the one that they're focusing on is adjacent to the Wyawash Trail up by Riverside Cemetery. They had a couple other spots that they wanted to bring forward. Um, I had some concerns. Um, I like the ideas, um, but they'll, they'll share this with you too, that aesthetically it looks like trees have fallen into the water and, and they should be removed, um, but it's actually fish habitat. So in other areas or projects they've done, they've had that concern from citizens. Um, my other concern that I brought up, um, and the, the board will weigh in on this next month, but um, if we did something adjacent to the wild wash by Riverside, which encourages fishermen, um, we really don't have parking, and do we want to encourage people to be parking, more parking in the um, cemetery that um, our department takes care of and manages? So just some things to start thinking about, and if you want to um, – you know, Google those fish sticks. Um, you'll see that uh, the DNR has a lot of information. Again, it's I think it's great for the fishing opportunities, but there are some pros and cons that um, the general public has, has voiced about. And then the other item is um, this is the year for the International Pathfinders Group to be back in Oshkosh. Every five years they come into the city, and so we're um, working with that organization. Kathy Snell, our special events coordinator, has been um, having a number of meetings with the organization along, along with um, county staff, DNR staff, and just all the departments and involved. Um, one item that will be coming to this board, um, will, and again in March, is they're requesting a temporary Sloan Wake area, essentially out in front of the Senior Center in the Fox River, so just off the Wisconsin Avenue Bridge. They'd like to have a water ski show out in that area, not only for uh, their uh, participants to enjoy, but it'd be a general public or, um, opportunity for people to enjoy. They're looking at the Thursday night when they'll be here. I believe it's August 15th, um, and it would be in mid to late afternoon. Um, but they do need a, a temporary Sloan Awake, and the city would have to um, weigh in on that because the city has um, the jurisdiction to do so. And typically, I bring those items to this board and then make a recommendation to the council. We did meet with um, DNR staff and the sheriff's office on that, um, and we're working through some of those logistics. So I just wanted to give you the heads up on those, and you'll see more of that in March. Um, that's it for now. Chad, you're up. Um, <clears throat> just a few highlights, some other things for like capital improvement projects are working on right now during the winter season but uh, the zoo maintenance building we're on our second phase for this year uh, which entails the construction of three 
uh, small exhibit areas within the zoo husbandry building. Last year, if you remember correctly, we did the kitchen area, a medical room, uh, the walk-in fridge freezer down there for storage, um, and another storage room that could potentially be exhibited at some point. And this year is actually the phase, second phase of these three uh, exhibits, a quarantine room and another storage closet within this facility. So the unique thing about this is that we'll have three view viewable areas for educational animals to be on display all the time. Uh, plus, it'll be a better housing environment for them during the winter season. So we're looking forward to that and hopefully we'll be having things completed here within the early part of Mar March right now. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, and we're doing that work in-house with our crews and they're doing an excellent job. So it's nice to see the, the progression. Second item out there is the West Haven Park restroom. Uh, de developed a, a professional service agreement right now for the a renovation of the interior, much like we have in the past few years with different restrooms, uh, upgrading the ADA compliance, fixtures, efficiency, the whole works. And uh, we have a couple small issues with the floor up there right now that we did remove, uh, just as some past settling to make sure that we have a good uh, concrete base in there before putting the floor in uh, and working with the architects on that design. Uh, that restroom will probably be out of service most of spring and I'd say a good portion of the summer until we can get that get everything out for bid and, and knowing things come back in favorable us to work with but it's a uh, uh, going to be another restroom and it's towards the end of our uh, area for some of our restrooms for restoration uh, and hopefully uh, people will be happy with that project when it's complete um, just for highlights for this year too, we put some money aside in our Pollock Community uh, Water Park budget to uh, improve some amenities up there at the facility. One of them being the barrier ropes around the perimeter uh, that are uh, deteriorating in certain areas. And the other is to replace uh, one of our zero depth water features. Um, actually, Jenny and I are gonna be sitting down here soon to get things together on that. But looking for an attraction that's more um, useful for the smaller tots and younger age groups in the zero depth area and to bring a little uh, vibrance to that area where, and we have one feature that needs a little repair every now and then it's actually the car for those people that reference that. Uh, so it'd be a good spot to put something in here new. So looking for that to happen here. Um, administratively, we got a couple things happening uh, out, on the, out on the web, uh, city web page. We have all of our seasonal staff's uh, positions posted and definitely looking for uh, people to look at those opportunities and get involved with our department uh, for the upcoming season. Um, one other project I forgot about that you'll probably be seeing some involvement here in early March, uh, the South Park Shelter Number 1. Uh, we'll be replacing the soffit and fascia around that building and giving that a little bit better appearance. Uh, if you see that's a little, uh, little worn down, uh, but we'll be working on that here in the next few weeks as well. Uh, but then we know we'll be into athletic field season and all those fun things come March and opening facilities already. Uh, welcome the warm weather anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> so uh, up until then, it's just going to be a lot of snow removal. Uh, the ice rink itself will still be intact here for a couple more weeks. Um, we will maintain it uh, up till that. But as soon as we get those uh, normal days of its mid 30s, high sun, things start to go quick with the rinks. So but we'll up until while the temperatures are working, we'll do our best we can. So. But that's all I have, and if there's any questions. Thank you, Chad. Bill. Okay. Um, I, as you know, we've been doing a lot of pruning and removals, uh, <laughs> so I won't <laughs> get into all that. Um, we're also um, working on some landscape plans. We're working with uh, the uh, planning department on putting together a scheme for the uh, uh, new William Waters uh, area uh, so as many of you know we've kind of done some new hardscape work down there um, so we'll be doing the landscape work in that uh, uh, early this spring so we're uh, uh, a little tentative with weather we we hope we can get an early jump on it this spring they the neighborhood would like to kind of see some progress by june 1st but i'm not sure if we're going to quite have it all complete at that point but um, we're uh, at least uh, fairly well along on the planning stage of it for what we're going to do there um, had some uh, good news related to grants here recently um, put in for a uh, Wisconsin DNR urban forestry grant and we have been approved for that um, that's an $18,000 grant which we're going to uh, match with uh, some great neighborhoods funding so we've got a essentially a $36,000 uh, tree planting project that we're going to focus on the uh, Lumber River neighborhood uh, which has been requesting trees um, that area is kind of in the um, 
the pain historic district so we're kind of working in um, kind of the older area of town that um, there will be using a lot of various species as I discussed earlier too so that's uh, that's a nice project that will be coming on um, they they were a little uh, slow on informing us of the projects that we actually have until 2020 to implement the pro pro project because we were on the second uh, selection of the uh, uh, 20 uh, 19 grants so they're they're allowing us a little extra time um, to accomplish that um, we also have a uh, a Bay Lakes grant that Ann Schaefer has uh, put in for uh, and that is um, to do about uh, 25 trees along the Morgan District Riverwalk. So we'll be installing uh, some ball and burlap trees in, in that zone um, early this spring as well. Uh, we also uh, last week received uh, notice that uh, the city of Oshkosh will receive a U.S. Forest Service grant uh, to plant 100 trees in the community. Um, because of the government shutdown, they weren't able to really process everything quite yet, so we're not real certain about what the dollar amount of that grant will be, but um, they've assured me that we're going to um, be receiving a grant. We just don't know for how much. but. Um, and I actually forgot I even applied for it, so that's, <laughs> it was kind of an interesting surprise. So, um, so other than that, uh, I've completed all the capital improvement equipment specifications for some of our new equipment that we have coming online. So um, we have a 1993 aerial truck that we're going to be replacing. So uh, we've got all the specs um put together for that um a new chip truck and a stump grinder so we've got uh some nice new items coming into the department which is going to help us tremendously so that's all i've got if anyone has any questions be happy to entertain well all right jenny okay um, so I too have been working on several grants that we've been filling out for our um, our we we need each other Wednesdays program and the zoo our education program for the summer. So um, I filled up three or four of those already, looking for funds to cover that that series. Um, we do it six different times throughout the summer. Um, again, trying to bring people into the zoo and and have some education component um, for the summer for that. Working on our Tuesday night concert series, we am just almost done getting all the contracts signed and back. So we have our lineup that we're going to be looking at. Um, also working with the contracts with the food trucks to bring back, as well as the family entertainment each night. So we're working with Verve, who was our sponsor for that concert series, um, in what they're going to be doing each night as well. So we're hoping to have um, great weather again this year. Last year was phenomenal. So um, it'll be a really nice series, and we're looking at some. Um, we did that. We did a poll with people um, that they could kind of put who they'd like to see down there. So um, got the community involved in that. So that'll be exciting, and we have a really good lineup. So I would think by next month um, we'll have that all in place and usually Lee beverage does our posters for us so if we have those back by next month we can bring those and um, show you guys a lineup and what's going on for that stuff um, also working on our movie nights throughout the summer um, getting those sponsored and entertainment for those nights um, as Ray mentioned a little bit looking at all the concession prices at all of our facilities um, the pool the ball diamonds all over just making sure what those margins are um, every year we do see a little bit of increase so we do have to increase our prices a little bit to make sure that we're at the right um, balance there um, Chad mentioned about the applications online so I've been reaching out to re employees from last year to see who's returning what positions we have open um, and we are working with HR this year to do something a little different. Um, I'm actually going to be going to the schools on the lunch hour. Our HR department is setting it up with the schools where we can come during lunch hours and talk to the kids right at school. So we're kind of coming to them to hopefully, um, you know, talk about our jobs and what the pay is, what the hours is, you know, what, what the hours are, um, so that they can take a look at those and hopefully kind of stir up a, some excitement for kids um, that want to work. Um, we're also hoping to do the one at UWO um, for some of our other jobs as well. So trying to find different ways to get out there rather than just having the applications online. Um, and Danny does it, or HR does a great job, you know, getting out in different publications, but we're trying to like physically get out to some locations to hopefully drum up some interest as well. Um, and other things, Stacy and I have been working on a ton is our, the new city website. We still have a lot of stuff on there that we're tweaking and getting fixed um, before the season starts here, getting updated from the old website to the new website so we have all current information coming up um, on the website. So 
just lots of trying to get a head start on the spring so but it's coming really soon so um, does anybody have any questions about any of that stuff Uh, I also wanted to add that the applications for the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation Scholarship Program is are they're online and available at the office. If you're not familiar with it, that is a program that they fund so that people who are lower income and qualify are able to apply to get a family pass, an adult pass, or children's passes in order to be able to go and use the water park throughout the summertime. So again, that's available online, the city website, or also at the office. You can get them all. Anything else? Comments? Any other business? All right. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? All motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. Yeah.